have traveled all over Kenya and East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and become profitable farmers. We will see how farmers across the region can learn from experts and from each other in every way. Join us and our experts on this journey and share the family's experiences as they make these changes. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Farming is often seen as an old people's job, but Agnes thinks it's an excellent job for young people too. This half an acre shamba, tucked away in Ololua area within Gong Town, is run by 26-year-old Agnes. She lives here with her elder sister Esther and her small brother Francis. Agnes was left to run the farm after their parents passed on. Agnes now inherited the shamba and with it many problems. And that is why we, Shamba Ship Up, are here. Uh, this is where I've planted my tomatoes. Uh, as you can see, my tomatoes are not doing very well and they are being attacked by diseases and they are very small in size. These are my chickens. Uh, I'm having a challenge on vaccination. I don't know when to give the right vaccination. I'm also having a challenge on diseases. I don't know to, how to treat the right disease at the right time. I also have a challenge on rats. They are being eaten by rats when they are still young. As you can see, these are my gutters. They are not nicely done, and I don't have enough water in my tank. We have a lot of work to do here. Agnes really needs some good advice. She's young to run the shamba by herself, but she's willing to learn. The heart of a shamba lies in the soil. Poor soil, poor crops. Simple. But there's always ways to improve the situation as our soil expert and Ocron Soil Cares well knows. To collect a good sample, you will need a soil auger or a banger. Insert the auger straight into the soil about 20 centimeters deep. Turn the auger to compact the soil, then pull it out carefully. Place the soil in the sample bag. Repeat this process about 20 times in different areas of your shamba in a zigzag pattern. Once you have mixed all the samples together in the sample bag, Label the bag with your name, telephone number, size of the shamba, and the crops you want to grow. And after two hours, we had the result. So, Enoch, yeah. you have tested the soil. Yeah. Tell us the results. Um, Agnes, yes. uh, your results don't look uh, really bad. Okay. We uh, tested on soil uh, pH, okay. then soil fertility, mm -hmm. and then we also measured uh, the level of carbon okay. in the soil. Okay. So your pH is fine. Okay. It's at 5.4. Okay. At 5.4, it can um, sustain and uh, support maize production. Okay. So you don't need to put any agricultural lime okay. to rectify the pH. Okay. On a soil uh, fertility, mm -hmm. the nitrogen is the one that is too low. Okay. But the phosphorus is adequate. Mm -hmm. uh, potassium is adequate for your farm. Okay. And the micronutrients are also adequate. Okay. So the only limiting um, nutrient is nitrogen. Okay. So uh, to rectify these, you need to use a nitrogenous rich fertilizer. But wait a minute, Whoa. so yeah. what is nitrogen? It's part of the macro uh, nutrients that are usually uh, important mm -hmm. in the uh, growth of the uh, plants. The results showed that Agnes's nitrogen is low, her potassium and phosphorus are adequate. Plants need phosphorus to grow roots. So the N is the missing uh, element. You need to replenish this. Yeah. So which fertilizer am I supposed to add to my soil? 
To correct this problem, Agnes needs to use either CAN or urea. So Agnes, there you have it. Yes. We have lots of work to do. Yes, yeah. we have. You ready? Yes, I am. <laughs> okay. Before planting anything in your shamba, and at least every two years, get your soil tested. Agnes realized she should have done a soil test long time ago. She could be getting great yields and making good profits. A soil test costs less than a bag of maize. 50 kilograms of fertilizer usually cost the same as a bag of maize. The cost of the test and the fertilizer will be equal to two and a half bags of maize. So, your increase in profit will be equal to an extra three bags of maize. After having tested our soil, we wanted to teach Agnes how to plant tomatoes and manage the pests and diseases. As you can see, Joseph, yeah. this is where I'm growing my tomatoes. Yeah. I'm having a bit of a challenge on diseases. Yes. Uh, I have trouble with white flies, yeah. bright, yeah. and my tomatoes are in small sizes. The fruit They're, size. Yeah, the fruit size is yeah. so small, yeah. so you can't sell it in the market. And then I want to do this as a business. Yeah, okay. Being commercial means uh, you need to grow crops which are high value. High value crops, you can do a cabbage mm. because a head of cabbage sometimes goes up to 100 bob. And in your section, you can do over 2,000 plants. So even if you, you, you take a raw uh, cost of like 50 bob mm -hmm. times the 2,000, you are meant to make a lot of money from your small section. Mm -hmm. okay. The other thing, you can do the, the peppers, the caps comes, mm. they are still fetching good money. Mm. And also you can try some cucumbers mm. still on your, on your portion. So let's go to the diseases. Which, yeah. which are these common diseases that you have seen <clears throat> for yourself? You have the arabrite and the red bright. And you just need to control or to do a preventative spray so that you can prevent the disease from setting in mm. to avoid you incurring a lot of cost in terms of disease control. Mm. So mm. it's bright. Mm. And the other challenge that we have noted is we have the, a lot of white flies. White flies are soft-bodied winged insects, closely related to aphids. When they attack, plants become extremely weak and leaves may dry out and turn yellow, and growth will be stunted. How can I increase the size of my tomatoes? The fruit size uh, is a factor of two aspects. Mm -hmm. The nutrition of the plant and the water availability. Mm -hmm. yeah? So we have to tackle the, the aspect of uh, nutrition well. Mm -hmm. That is in terms of uh, the amount of manure that we put and also the fertilizers that we, we use okay. on our plants okay. and ensuring that we have enough water and quit water mm. that is critical i would like to know why you have put the wood shavings in your farm okay this manure yeah. i get it from the chicken house yeah. when i finish the bunch yeah. i sweep the, the manure yeah. i bring it to the shop how long does the the broilers take in the in the house Six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah. So in six weeks, the wood shavings will not have bro broken down or decomposed to be manure. Mm. Once we put it in the soil, it's like we are preventing the soil or the water from getting in, in the soil. Only use well decomposed manure on your shamba, as raw manure can damage the plants. In order to do this tomato growing as a business, yeah. should she plant tomatoes all year round? Uh, no. In order for you to maximize the yield from the from your farm, mm -hmm. you need to, to plant different crops. You need to think of now bringing in, like after you have done a tomato, mm -hmm. take you like four months, give it a break of like another three weeks, mm -hmm. then come in with a cabbage. Mm -hmm. The pest build up, you have already broken the cycle of the, of the pests because the pests that affect the cabbage mm -hmm. are not the same pests that affect the the tomatoes. Yeah. Today, Agnes, I want to show you how to put a, a seed bed mm -hmm. or a nursery mm -hmm. which will guarantee you 99% germination mm -hmm. so that we can avoid some of the losses that we incur in the early plant stages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always make sure you wear protective clothing when using chemicals. To plant your seedlings, you'll need to have seedling tray, cocoa pit, which you can buy at your local agrovet, two liters of water, apron star and a table. For the seed treatment, measure one gram of apron star. Then pour it into a sachet of seedlings and add one milliliter of water. Shake it well so that it can mix. 
Place it in a cardboard and let it dry for 10 to 15 minutes. Take the seed tray and pour the cocoa peat on each hole and level it well. The reason we don't use normal soil on the seed tray is because it will stick together and this will not allow water through, so the seeds don't grow well. Make holes using your finger on each tray hole. Make sure they are not very deep. Put on one seed per hole. Add some more cocoa peat to cover. Using a spray pump, spray the tray with one liter of water. Then place the tray under some shade and leave it for seven days. After seven days, your seedling should look like this and be ready for transplanting. So, if you want to grow a healthy and flourishing tomato crop, just follow Joseph's expert instructions. Agnes is part of this chicken supply chain, but as with all farmers, she needs a little advice. We asked Caleb, a veterinary officer with Ultravetis, to pop by and advise Agnes on her existing chicken venture. So Caleb, uh, do you have any advice for Agnes's chickens? Yes, um, first of all, you need to start with your doorstep. You should have a foot bath with a disinfectant inside where you step on it before you get to the chicken. Mm. That will prevent diseases from reaching your butt. Mm. And number two, you need to do something about the fence. It will encourage rats around your butt. Mm. You need to also open from that wall to the other wall. Mm. Should be open, so this part should be removed. The open sides, you need to put curtains made of feed sacks, not polythene. And it should be put on the outside of the house. Carissa and the team get to work rebuilding the chicken shed following the doctor's instructions. To help with the rat problem, you need lani rat. Cut a hole in both ends of the box to make an entrance for the rats. Pour the baits into the box and then close the box and put it outside the chicken house near the bushes. Agnes needs to disinfect her chicken house while her chicks were still there. Remember, when using any chemicals, you should wear protective clothing, especially gloves and nose mask. Pour 50 milliliters of TH4 and add 20 liters of water. Mix well after adding 20 liters of water into the knapsack. Spray the whole house, including the walls, floor and the roof. You need to do this before a new batch of chicks come into the house. Anthracite can be disinfected and used every two weeks when birds are in. During intensive stress, brooding, vaccination, disease, change of feeds or transportation, give your birds amylite by adding one tablespoon to one liter of water. To help chickens grow faster and reach early maturity and increase their egg production, use Amin Total in their water by adding one tablespoon to 10 liters of water. If Agnes is serious about rearing healthy broiler chickens, she must stick to the expert advice. The outlay for a shed and fittings might seem a lot, but it's a one-off payment. And just think of the returns. Broiler chickens can sell for a lot of money, making a huge profit. You know what I think we should do? Mm -hmm. We should put our feet up. Yeah, right. Coming up. Young Agnes is just about managing to run this shamba after inheriting it from her parents. But there's still room for improvement. She's been taught the importance of a soil test, the best way to plant and nurture her tomato crop so she can make a nice profit selling truly excellent tomatoes. 
and Caleb the Otra Vetis expert has told her what's needed to have a successful broiler chicken business. But she's only young with a lot of responsibilities on her plate and has a lot to learn. Before the experts arrive, it seems Naomi is dying for a cup of tea. A nice break for everyone. Thanks, Naomi. <laughs> right, back to work. Let's look at that cattle pen, another of Agnes's problems. Harrison Kamau, an animal production specialist from Unga, tells Agnes how things can be improved in her cows and milk production. Now, Harrison, you've seen the cattle shed and you had a look at the cows. Yes. What are your observations? From the traps, you can see the cows are on dry hay only. They're not being feared anything else. She has confessed she's not giving any concentrates. And uh, as you have seen with the animals, their weight is very low, especially on the milking cow. You can see the bones protruding out of the cow. That meaning that the body score or the weight of that animal is very low. Also, when you touch the cow, you can see the hair falling off, meaning those cows health-wise, they have a lot of worms. And supplementations are a bit low. The milk production is very low. We get one and a half liters. Uh, there, is no, there is no enough food. We, right now we are feeding on dry hair. The issue of production comes to the cow, the, the way the cow is fed. When the weight of the animal is very low, the production is going to be very minimal. The weight of the animal is very low, even the reproduction is short. That animal, to demand for a bull or to demand to be inseminated, it will take a bit of a time. Agnes should be able to feed the, the animals, despite the hair she's giving. She should give concentrates which have all the nutrients. And the animals are going to get all the vitamins and minerals, the energy which is needed for that animal to gain weight and also to be able to increase the milk production. A cow needs proteins from fodder and concentrates, minerals from mineral supplements and plenty of clean water. How am I supposed to use the, this product? and how much milk should I expect from each cow and how much will it cost me? This product, the quality in it, make sure that for every kg you use, it's going to give you two liters of milk. And if you look at the cost of this dairy milk, for a farmer, it comes to around 28 shillings per kg of milk. Now Agnes, yes. a healthy cow which is producing milk should be on good weight around 350 kgs. Mm -hmm. That is body weight. Mm -hmm. That animal is going to give you the optimum production even without supplementation. If your cow is giving you five liters and you add a kg of dairy meal to that animal, a cow is going to give, to give you seven liters. Mm -hmm. And as you give that dairy meal progressively and you maintain a good diet, mm -hmm. that animal is going to give you more milk. Agnes, yes. can you please tell us how much you sell per liter of milk in this uh, area? Uh, we sell 50 shillings per liter. 50 shillings per litre. Yes. Now practically, Fugo Dairy Meal per kg at the retail shop is costing 30 shillings okay. a kg, okay. which I said is going to give you 2 litres of milk. If you multiply that by the cost of per litre, which is 50 shillings, okay. it's going to give you 100 shillings. shillings. Mm -hmm. You're going to be making a profit of 70 shillings from every kg of dairy meal. If you want to feed your cows properly, remember, when the calf is one week old, feed it early winter pellet which will help it grow. At three months until eight months, feed the heifer young stock pencils. This will help increase the body weight. After eight months until it's served, feed the heifer unga afia meal. When the cow starts producing milk, give it fugo dairy meal. As Agnes cattle shed was in good condition, what needed fixing was a flaw. Cost to Agnes, who like many farmers have a lot of ready building materials to hand, could come in under a thousand shillings. Healthy cows give high quality milk, which means more money in Agnes's pocket. But supplements in a cattle pen are not Agnes's only problem. Her cows, chickens and vegetables all need clean drinking water. Agnes gets water from the local project but it only comes once a week for a very short period. She has a solid tank, 
but her gutters are in a very poor state. I think we shall call on Shamba Shepap Fundi team to help fix the gutters. Harvesting water from your roof is very important. The estimated size in square meters of Agnes's roof is 15 square meters. And the average rainfall in Gong is 12.5 millimeters in May alone. So, she can trap 15 times 12.5. That is 187 liters in May alone. The day is growing to a close and the last finishing touches are being made on the cattle shed and the gutters. Before we leave, I just have one more thing I would like Agnes to learn. Agnes has to travel all the way to Ngong Town to buy chemicals for her crop, which is difficult and costs money. Sometimes, to save costs, she buys the chemicals from a dealer closer to home. But this is not the right way to do it, as we learn from our friends at Pest Control Products Board, who are here to tell Agnes about fake chemicals. Hey, Agnes, I know you are a young enterprising farmer and you are doing a lot of enterprises in your farm. I know you are also growing tomatoes. Yes. Yeah, what kind of pesticides are you using for your tomatoes? Uh, I use pesticide to control alphicide. Uh, uh, I use to control bright. I also use chemicals to control cutworms. Yeah. Okay, where do you buy your pesticides? Uh, I go to the agrovets. I explain what I'm experiencing in the farm. Yeah. And then they give me the chemicals. I come and spray. Uh, one thing you should always remember that before you go and buy any pesticides, they are expensive. You should know your problem first, so that you go and buy the specific pesticide for that problem, so that you don't waste your money. Uh, the second thing, uh, when you're going to go to a, when you're buying pesticides, go to a shop that is reputable, uh, and when you go to the shop, look at that shop whether they have a pest control products license. That is a shop that we have inspected, and we know that they are selling good products. And you also go for the shops that are reputable, the ones that you know, you know them that sell good products. And then the shop that is also going to sell you pesticides should be a shop that is able to give you a receipt. Okay. Why do I say a receipt? It's because anybody who gives you a receipt is somebody reputable. And if there's a problem with that product and you report it to us, we'll be able to follow it back. And if there's no receipt, it will be difficult for us to follow it back because he might say he's not sell you. So always buy from a shop that is reputable. You'll also get your good product. Pesticides are expensive. They're supposed to make you money, but not make you a loss. So make sure that you buy it from reputable stockists. Okay. How, how can I identify the fake products? Yeah, there are numerous fake products in the market. Okay. Uh, one thing, that's why first thing we should know is that there are pesticides that are not registered. And also we have got some other what we call counterfeit products. Okay. Why I was telling you to buy from repeatable shops? These are shops that we have, we have uh, inspected and we know they don't sell fake products. The second thing is don't buy from hawkers and uh, pro-box sellers. We don't license hawkers and we don't license product pro-box sellers. Or briefcase sellers will bring you products here at home. Those people are the people who are selling fake products and illegal products. So please go and buy from repeatable shops. Our labels are usually colored. You'll find that products that come with photocopied labels, those are not good products. And our labels come, they are colored, and all labels in Kenya, you should note, they are written in Kiswahili and English. And any, any product that we have registered comes with a number, pest control plus number. So do the same things apply to the animal products? Yeah, whatever products we are using, mm -hmm. we should buy them from repeatable stockists, we should buy products that have been registered. Before we buy a product, we should know what we are controlling. Otherwise, if we don't know what you're controlling, we are likely to make losses. Okay. There you have it, Agnes. Yes. You had it for yourself. Yes, I've, I've had a lot. Okay, uh, great. It has been a wonderful shape up. The soils are fixed, the cows are happy, and now we know where to get real chemicals. And the chickens are very happy with no stress at all. Our time on Agnes's chamber is coming to an end, and we must be off to our next farm. Shamba Shape Up is online. To learn more about today's topics or to watch any of our previous episodes, visit shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You could also visit our Facebook page, Shamba Shape Up. 
to get more information, get involved in discussions, and also get a chance to enter some of our great competition to win great prizes. You can also find us on Twitter at Shamba Shepa.